I'm going to go right into the word for tonight. I've titled tonight's teaching, A Different Kind. A Different Kind. And I'm in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 9. And I'm reading verses 17 and 18. And then I'm going to jump down to verses 28 and 29. So Mark chapter 9, verses 17 and 18. Then verses 28 and 29. And, the, and it reads, Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a mute spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples. I asked them if they would cast it out, but they could not. Jumping down to verses 28 and 29 in Mark chapter 9. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast out the demon? So Jesus said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. You know, even as I was studying this passage today, and for those just tuning in, I read Mark chapter 9, verse 17, 18, 28, and 29. You know, I think it's so sad that the disciples, you know, had been trained and equipped by Jesus and were ministering in his name, yet they couldn't cast out the mute spirit in this man's son right they were embarrassed that they failed in this area and they asked jesus privately why why couldn't we do it and i think this passage is a reflection of the church today as well where many of us as believers are not seeing the manifestation of god's power and authority in our lives or in the lives of those around us and many on the call tonight like the disciples are asking God why and I think the true essence of Jesus's response is often missed when we teach or preach this passage Jesus told them the reason you couldn't cast out this spirit is because this kind meaning this kind of spirit this kind of warfare this kind of situation this kind of test can only be conquered through prayer and fasting. And now many people have interpreted this scripture to mean that the disciples should have fasted and prayed prior to trying to cast out the demon. But my issue with that understanding is that the man brought his son to them because he needed deliverance right then and there. He could not wait for them to go home and call a fast and pray then come back to him with his, you know, with his son, come back to them with his son for healing and deliverance. So it could not mean that they, you know, the man, that Jesus was saying they should have called a fast right there and then. I believe what Jesus was trying to get across to them was the idea of a lifestyle of fasting and prayer. A lifestyle of fasting and prayer. Many of us know how to stir up ourselves in the moment. When it's time to pray or when it's time to share a word. But if we have a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, we don't need to work it up or stir it up at the appointed time. It'll just flow. You know, even as I'm teaching, I'm seeing the vision of an electrical outlet. You know, we plug in something when we need to use it. If you want to iron your clothes, you plug your iron in when you want to iron your clothes. You know, and but we but in the spirit in the spirit, I really sense the Holy Spirit saying, Don't wait to find an electrical outlet to plug into when the need arises, but cause your spirit to be plugged in at all times. Be plugged in at all times. It's a lifestyle. Jesus said, This kind, this kind. That means that there are situations that we'll encounter in this life that are a whole different breed from past tests and past trials there's a this kind of situation where the level of anointing and authority that we've operated in before just won't do 
where the demonstration that we've used before just won't do. There's a this kind that demands a whole lifestyle change, people of God, where we're not praying and fasting for any temporal need that we have in the moment, but we're praying and fasting for deeper intimacy and a closer walk with Jesus, right? Our prayers don't just stop when we say amen, but we're maintaining a lifestyle of prayer where we're talking to God consistently throughout the day. Now, you may not be able to pray for one hour, but there should never be an hour in your day when you're not praying, right? First Thessalonians 5 verse 17 says we should pray without ceasing. The Amplified Version says we should be unceasing and persistent in prayer. The Message Version simply says pray all the time. Pray all the time. It's a lifestyle, people of God. And Jesus even told a parable in Luke chapter 18 of the widow who kept petitioning the judge for justice. And he said at the beginning of the parable that men ought always to pray and not faint, not lose heart, not give up. It's a lifestyle, people of God. Jesus said to the disciples, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting, by a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, a lifestyle of complete and total surrender. Not just in the moment when somebody says, hey, can you pray for me? Now you're trying to pray in the spirit and work yourself up to lay hands and to pray. But if it's a lifestyle, if it's something that you've been practicing every day, if it's something that comes naturally to you, if you flow in the spirit at all times, if you're always plugged into the Holy Spirit, you don't have to work yourself up. You already have the level of faith that is needed to petition God on behalf of the person that's asking for prayer or on behalf of your own need. It's a lifestyle. Some of you have major requests of God in this season and things that you're believing him to do, ways that you want him to use you and manifest his glory through you. But hear what the Lord says to you tonight. This kind of. The kind of manifestation that you're believing for can only happen by a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. A lifestyle of prayer and fasting. When was the last time you fasted just to get close to God? I don't mean when you're fasting because you needed something, you know, you needed, you know, money for a particular bill or you needed God to work a situation. Now, when was the last time you fasted just to get closer to God? How is your prayer life? Are you only praying at designated times in the day? Like, well, I pray in the morning when I wake up and I pray at night before I go to bed or I pray when a particular need arises. Or are you in a constant thought pattern with the Lord where you're communicating with him consistently throughout the day? Don't be caught off guard, people of God, like the disciples did, trying to use all use all practices to address situations that you may feel you've encountered before. The disciples were used to praying for people and casting out demons. They were used to doing it in Jesus' name and the demons would respond. They would leave. But they got caught off guard and they tried to use this old way to address a situation that they felt, well, we've encountered this before, but this time the Bible says they could not cast the spirit out. Don't get caught off guard in this season. There is a this kind in this season. Not everything that you're facing in this season is something that you've seen before. There is a this kind that requires a lifestyle change, not just an act or a momentary change, but a lifestyle change. The Bible tells us about Samson. You know the story of Samson. And the Bible says Samson, not knowing that Delilah had cut his hair, the Bible says he went out and he did as he, he went out as he did in other times. To defeat his enemy. So he didn't realize that his hair was cut off. That his strength was gone. That he had lost his connection. And he went out. As he did in other times. To defeat his enemies. And he didn't realize that there was a this kind. If you want more authority people of God. You have to develop a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Having power 
is one thing. The Bible says we receive power when we receive the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us that. We receive power when we receive the Holy Spirit. Authority, however, has levels. And it's based on character. It's based on relationship and a deeper intimacy with God. That is why the demons were able to say, you know, who are you? Jesus we know, but who are you? Right? Because authority has levels. Are you known in the spirit? Are you known when, 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 when you pray? Do demons tremble at the sound of your voice because of the lifestyle that you live? Because of your character? Because of your relationship and the deep level of intimacy that you have with God? Authority has levels. As somebody on the call tonight, you have a this kind of situation in your life right now. And you're wondering why it hasn't moved. You're wondering why you haven't been able to conquer it. Hear the word of the Lord to you tonight. It takes a lifestyle. It takes a lifestyle. Certain things that you're facing in this season or believing God for in this season can only be accomplished or conquered through a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. Hear the word of the Lord tonight, people of God. Yes, there's some things that once we activate our faith, God is going to move on our behalf. But I believe the disciples had faith when they tried to cast out the mute spirit from that man's son. And even though they had the faith, Jesus said this kind can only come out through prayer and fasting. This can only be accomplished. This can only be, the situation can only be conquered through a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. I want you to hear the word of the Lord tonight and receive it in Jesus name. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight. We lift your name. We exalt you. We adore you. We magnify you. There is none like you. None can be compared to you, God. We elevate you tonight. We extol your matchless name for you are worthy to receive the glory and the honor and the praise. Father, we thank you tonight that your word says to whom much is given, much is required. I thank you, God, that the fact that we are faced with a this kind of situation or a this kind of test in this season is an indication that you've given us much. And so you're requiring much from us. The ordinary will not do. What we used to do in the past will not do. And I thank you, Father God, that your grace is sufficient in this season. You said that you have given us power and dominion and that we will do the works that you have done and even greater works we will do. But where you're calling us to in this season and what you're calling us to face requires a lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle of fasting, a lifestyle of surrender and consistent communication with you. Father, we do well with praying about our needs and our desires, but you're calling us into a lifestyle of just because prayer, just because you're God. Just because we love you, just because you're our everything, just because we enjoy your presence, you're calling us into a just because lifestyle of prayer. And I pray tonight, God, that you help us in this area, that you help us even in the area of fasting, that we may make it a lifestyle and not an occasional act. You're calling us deeper, Father, and we want to launch out into the deep with you. I pray tonight that you help us to not be found guilty of not being able to cast out demons or perform miracles, signs, and wonders in your name because our hearts aren't aligned in a lifestyle of surrender and intimacy. Let people never come to us for healing or deliverance and leave the same way they came because our help was ineffective. Help us, God, in Jesus' name. When sinners, when unsaved people, when discouraged people, when backsliders come to us, God, and they ask us for prayer, for healing, or for deliverance, cause them to never leave our presence the same way that they came. Father, your word says that even Peter's shadow was able to heal people. Cause our presence in this season to be like Peter's shadow. That when people come into our presence, when they come in contact with us, they immediately come in contact with the God that resides inside us, and they never leave our presence the same way they came in Jesus name father I ask you to forgive us for being content on the surface 
for not pressing in to discover the more that lies in you. For there's a greater level of authority and a more powerful level of the anointing that we have not yet experienced. I ask you tonight, Father, to bait us in. Bait us in tonight, God, to that deeper level. I pray tonight that you plow the soil of our hearts. I pray tonight, God, that you take us deeper, that you take us deeper in the spirit, that you take us deeper in our walk with you, Father, in Jesus' name. This is a season where people are coming to you and they want to see proof. They want to see evidence that you are real. They want to see evidence that you are a mighty God, that you are still working miracles and you are still operating in power and authority as you did in the Bible. Let us be your witnesses in the earth, God. Let us be your representers, your representation in the earth, God. In Jesus' name, I pray for you that you'll take us deeper, that you'll take us deeper, God, in this season. I thank you for how you continue to move on behalf of your people. We give you glory for all the testimonies that we have received, even on the Midnight Cry Prayer Call. Father, there is an anointing for jobs on the Midnight Cry Prayer Call. Hear me tonight, people of God. There is an anointing for jobs on the Midnight Cry Prayer Call. Father, you provided so many jobs and opened so many doors of opportunity for your people on this call. And somebody needs to tap into this anointing. If you're in need of a job tonight heaven is bursting with resources god continues to show himself mighty and strong in terms of provisions of jobs and i need you to tap in to extend your faith in this season people of god to believe god to do what he is clearly doing in the lives of other people father we love you tonight we love you tonight, God. We give your name the glory. We pray even for the people of Houston tonight in Jesus' name. So many people have been displaced by Hurricane Harvey. Father, you promised, you promised in your word, God, never to destroy the earth by water again. You promised, God. And I pray for mercy tonight. And we call you in remembrance of your word tonight, God. We call you in remembrance of your word tonight. Father, we ask you to send help. We ask you to dispatch your ministering angels to rescue those that are stranded, to set the captives free, to provide for those in need. We pray, Father, that even as your word says in Genesis 8, that you remembered Noah and his family and you sent a great wind over the earth and the waters receded. We pray tonight, God, in Jesus' name, that you will send that same wind in Jesus' name tonight, that you will cause the waters in Houston and the surrounding areas to miraculously recede. Glory to God to miraculously recede in Jesus name. We pray tonight, God, that you will open up clogged drains, mm. open up clogged drains, God, create water paths for the water to begin to clear out. Even now, Father, in Jesus name, you are the God who speaks to winds and waves and they obey your command. And we intercede on behalf of your people tonight. We ask you to send help from your throne and to remember your promise. We pray in Jesus name even Louisiana God as they are reporting you know that the, the, the projected path of the hurricane is heading even to Louisiana father you are God nothing is out of your control we have seen you reset the path of hurricanes before Thank you, God. We have seen you reset the path of hurricanes before. You are the God who tells the ocean how far on the seashore it can come. So we pray for your mercy. We pray for your favor for Louisiana, for Houston tonight in Jesus' name. We pray for a shift. We pray for a course correction in Harvey's path in Jesus' name. For nothing is too difficult for you. So we press in tonight. We call upon the God who answers by fire. We call upon the God who answers by fire. The God who caused fire to fall from heaven and to dry up the water in the trench when Elijah called on you to prove yourself to the prophets of Baal. We call upon that same God that has water quenching fire in the name of Jesus to quench, to lick up the water, O oh God, in Jesus' name, to create paths, O oh God, to cause a recession, Oh God of water levels in Jesus name. We call upon our consuming fire tonight. We need a miracle tonight, God, in Jesus name. We need a miracle tonight, God, in Jesus name. And we put our faith together. 
We put our faith together and we bombard heaven with millions of believers across this world who are praying even for the conditions in Houston. We continue to bombard your throne tonight, God, and we call you in remembrance of your word. We call you in remembrance of your word. You said you would never destroy the earth by water again. There is a rainbow that you cause us to see as a sign of your promise, as a reminder of your promise. Father, we ask you for help tonight. We ask you for help tonight in Jesus' name. You are the God who answers by fire. And we call upon your name. We have nowhere else to go. We have no other hope in this world. You told us to have no other gods before you. And so we come to you. We come to you, God, because we don't know where else to go. We don't know what else to do. I pray, oh God, for peace. I pray, oh God, for divine intervention in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I commit every unspoken request represented on this call tonight. I pray, Father, that you meet the needs of your people, people that are standing in need of a miracle, in need of doors to be open, in need of healing, in need of deliverance, in need of salvation, in need of a breakthrough tonight. We stand in agreement. We stand in agreement tonight and we lift our petitions up to you in Jesus' name. For the person on this call that's being faced with a, a different kind, a, this kind of situation, I pray that you prick their hearts, that you convict their spirits, oh God, to, to, to enter into a lifestyle now of prayer and fasting, a lifestyle now of seeking your face so that their prayers will be heard and answered in this season. Activate and increase our faith to believe you for the impossible in this season, God, because you are working signs, miracles, and wonders in our lives. So cause us to believe you for the impossible in this season. Father, I cover every person. I cover my brother, my sister under your blood tonight in Jesus' name. I pray you meet every single person under the sound of my voice. I pray you meet us in our dreams tonight, God. I pray you speak clearly and specifically in our dreams tonight, God, in Jesus' name, that you send clarity, that you send direction, that you send answers, instruction, guidance, strategies for somebody, even through dreams tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. I cover every person under your blood. And we continue to pray that you bait us in, and that you take us even deeper in this season. We love you with our whole hearts tonight, God. We recommit and rededicate our lives to you. We recommit and rededicate our lives to a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. It is in the mighty and the matchless, all-powerful, undefeated name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen, amen, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. This kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. This kind, a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. I love you, people of God. I am praying for you. Continue to keep the Midnight Cry prayer call lifted in prayer. We give God glory tonight for how this word served as confirmation to people on the call. We thank God that his word did not return to him void, but that it accomplished the thing for which it was sent and it has prospered in the area to which it was sent. We thank God tonight that not one drop of his word has fallen to the ground, but that those who needed to hear this word have heard this word tonight and those who need to hear it will hear it on the replay and receive the direction that God is giving in this season. I love you guys. Continue to keep the Midnight Cry prayer call lifted in prayer by His grace and mercy. We'll be back on the prayer call again on Thursday at midnight Eastern Standard Time, 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. God bless you. Love you too, guys. God bless you.